And we're live. And we're live. And we're back to the third, third exciting, exciting episode, episode of, of the all new, all new daily, daily, daily in the nerd, in the nerd show. show. With me today, With me today is, is the one, the only, Belfast, Belfast author, author, Mr. Mark, Mark McCann. McCann. Hello, McCann. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be here. To be here. It's, uh, it's. I love that uh, you're, you're so relaxed. 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 Glasses, glasses in your head. Chill, chill. We're just going to take us on the drive. Of course, of course, of course. You know, 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 you on what you, on got, what going you got going on, on. Uh, um, because, because uh, ultimately, uh, ultimately uh, that's what that's this is, it's just, just uh, us, us, us shooting, 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 yeah, yeah. The the poop, poop, uh, uh, as a work, work. And, uh, and, uh, you know, you know. <laughs> see, 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 see what we think, think about, about these nerdy, nerdy news, nuggy, nuggy, top dog for all right, all right. Um, as, as, as always, I'm your host, Mark. Mark. Uh, for all, for all these stories, stories coming, coming up from Rory, Rory, Rory you can get us at followingthenerd.com. Uh, and now, and now on, on the, the uh, not, not on camera, camera but we have, have producer, producer Saxon, Saxon uh, sitting in the wing wings here. here. He's, He's going to be monitoring uh, all your messages, messages up coming in. Then. Um, this is just, this is just, we're just, we're just trying to find our feet with this the way it works. You know, and he had a brief or something last night, face face roll up, and he just looked absolutely tense. So I think it's better to keep him on. Camera. Right, I'm, right, I'm, I'm getting, getting a lot of PC here. here. Okay, 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 right. right. So, so <laughs> on, on that, that note, um, right, let's, let's get, get into, into the, the big, big news, news stories, stories of, of the day. day. Uh, uh, first, first foremost, foremost Mark, Mark, uh, I don't know if you're a fan, fan of the Troll 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 I'm aware of Troll Hunters and no, I'm not a fan. fan. <laughs> I mean, I, mean uh, I, know I know a lot of people, people really like, like it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my, uh, my, uh, my brother, brother he actually, actually really likes like it. Rack rack me to watch it. it. I, I didn't, didn't get, get around to it. It's, it's just, just one of those things. So much fun stuff on Netflix. And whatever you, you know, like yourself, if you've got a schedule and you're trying to get all the things done, you've got to, I guess, look at what you get in at the night, watch. So uh, Troll Hunters hasn't made it onto the list yet. Um. Right, well, I'm with your brother-in-law. If you get a chance, watch it. It's absolutely superb. Um, the new back Battlestar Galactica series has got a new showrunner in the form of Little Drummer Girl and Assassin's Creed. He's Michael Leslie. Another Battlestar Galactica? I I don't know. I, it's too soon. No, to be honest with you, I like I like the last reboot a lot. I like the original series. Well, I like the last reboot up, up until maybe the uh, the last the final season. But I mean, at the end of the day, uh, if you, yeah, I mean, what, what's it, it? It depends on the take. If they've got an interesting take on it, then sure, why not? All right, fair enough. Uh, the the CW and D has dropped a new trailer for Star Girl, which comes out in a couple of weeks. We get our first look at the Justice Society of America and the Injustice Society of America. This actually looks a lot of fun, and I'm he hearing that the early reviews are saying that it's really, really good. Will you give it a try? Sure. I mean, listen, one thing I always say about the CW stuff is it works well. It's popcorn fluff. I mean, yeah. it's just it's mel melodramatics with superheroes in it. So if they want to stick to that formula and and not get uh, too preachy, I'm happy enough to watch. Well, now this is actually this is financed by DC Universe, so it's more of the people that made Titans and Doom Patrol, but it's more of a family show. Oh. Jeff Johns is the the man behind it. Sure. Um, but check out well, the trailer; it definitely looks a lot of fun. Uh, definitely, uh, yeah, I'll give it a look. 100%. Um, Saxon, this is something, I don't know if you've watched it, uh, Petronella Osgood from Doctor Who, actress Ingrid Oliver did a special mini episode uh, just ahead of one of the rewatches at the weekend. Um, th this is just an hour in the long line of awesome stuff that Doctor Who fans are getting during this lockdown. Uh, I don't know, Mark, have you watched it? Were you, are you, you're not really a Doctor Who fan, sure. <laughs> Dude, listen, right, I, let me tell you, I've watched the Tenant run on Doctor Who, uh, I've watched bits and pieces of the Matt Smith and the Capaldi. Uh, I'm not a huge Who fan. I know you guys, you know, Saxon are, are, are biggies in the, the, the Who fan, but it's uh, those things I've kind of got to be again, you know what I mean? I can appreciate it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, this is one I think you will appreciate. This Saturday night, Jamie Day Curtis, John Carpenter are doing a Halloween watch along for uh, the, the 2018 Halloween movie. They're going to be joined by a load of the cast and the crew and stuff as 
as well. Uh, the hashtag is Halloween at home. I might tune in for this. I haven't actually seen this movie, so it might be a good chance for me to sit down and watch it. Yeah, I would watch that. Uh, I actually really enjoyed the. Uh, well, I guess it's it's been uh, it was a direct sequel. The way it was shot. Um, yeah. and I did enjoy it. I like to, uh, you know, I like Jamie Lee Curtis as a grizzled old uh, survivalist, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a good movie. So I would definitely watch yeah. that. I'm gonna check it out. Now, this, listen, I gotta be honest. This is one I don't know. Maybe you know it. Netflix are developing this uh, TV series based on the Sweet Tooth comic book series, which is about Gus, who's part uh, deer, part boy. Uh, I don't know. It's it's lost to me. I'm hearing it's really really good. Um, so you know, this to me could be, you know. This could be that I always like to find something that I don't know about and really get into it, so I'm looking forward to this. Well, I I, I believe that was Jeff Lemire who uh wrote Sweet Tooth. Uh, again, I've never read it, but I have read a lot of Jeff Lemire stuff, and he is a good writer. So, if they adapt okay. the material fairly directly, I would, I would imagine it would translate very well. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, this is a lot of comic book properties, especially independent stuff, that's where they, the, the creators make their money now and the options. So. If that's got an option for a play to Jeff, uh, he's getting a payday, and uh, that is, yeah, could be a good show. Okay. Um, the CW has acquired the rights to DC Universe's cancelled Swamp Thing series. Uh, now, I don't know if you watched it, Mark. I watched it. It was absolutely superb, and the fact that they cut it off basically halfway through the season, it was criminal. It was really, really good. It was really dark, uh, but now the DC, now uh, the CW has it, but all they have at the minute is the rights to stream the episodes that have already been made, but I think people are hoping that maybe with them all they might go down the road of developing like a Justice League Dark, but then we also know HBO Max are making a Justice League series. Uh, but it got a wee bit of excitement. Did you see Swamp Thing? I did watch it. Um, it. It falls into the same bracket as Constantine for me. I liked it. Uh, I felt there was a lot more potential there and um it's yeah. like uh, you know I, I would i would very much like to see them do more of that i'm a massive fan of the uh the mirror title pen run uh steve Bissett. so um it lent into that a lot and it really did bring the horror which was good so i would you know i genuinely would like to see more um okay. swapping. Uh, right, we, this is something that's been popping up a lot over the last couple of weeks. The community creator, Dan Harmon, uh, seems very, very optimistic that we may actually finally get the six seasons and the movie. Uh, he says, I can tell people for sure that the enthusiasm community, both for all of this time and the resurgence of it on Netflix, there's always an aspect that affects the marketplace. Uh, and he said he's really, really excited for the coming months. Uh, it looks like we're finally going to maybe get the conclusion, the, 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 the community movie that we've all wanted. Sure, grip, grip. Okay, I'm on board. Yeah, <laughs> always love the show. Uh, like I say, I've just you know, I I like the show. I like the the, the actors involved, and uh, you know, it, it was definitely one of my favorites while it was running. So if they want to bring uh, an addendum to it, have a movie, go for it. He does. Okay, right. On to the big stories. Now this is one that's probably going to put a couple of noses out of joint. Um, Karen Gillan has is rumored, according to sources, to be Disney's main choice to lead a new Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Um, we know that Johnny Depp was fired basically uh, a while back uh, because of the whole controversy between him and Amber Heard. Things got out of hand and it all got very public and very dirty. But Johnny Depp is out. They want to continue the franchise. Now, admittedly, it did kind of burn itself out of Disney anyway. Um, so they want a new fresh take. But it looks like they may be going with a female lead and Karen Gillen. What do you think? Well, I mean, a couple of things. I only ever watched Pirates of the Caribbean up to the second one. So it was mm -hmm. never really a franchise I was that interested in. Uh, I do like Johnny Depp. I think he got done very dirty in uh, that. Um, uh, it was basically a... A public smearing especially before all the facts were in and it's come out that um he may have actually been the victim in that incident um regards karen gillen i like her a lot as an actress um i'm not a big fan of reboots uh and as long as this thing isn't being heralded as um you gotta go see it because it's women in it i mean like some of my favorite films recently were female-led um you know you had um the hunts 
uh, what was the other one? Annihilation, which was an entire mm-hmm. female cast. Uh, that went ready or not? Like, we talked uh, about Ready or Not yesterday. Re- yeah, Re- Ready or Not's one of one of my favorite horror movies in recent years. Again, it was it was female led. Listen, I don't, I don't care if your lead's female. Uh, all I care is that it's a good movie and that you've got a well written, well developed character. So uh, you know, if, if you want to if you want to do that across the board with well written, well developed female characters in good movies, then great, go for your life. But, you know, it's the whole uh, preachiness that gets me. I've just no interest in listening to somebody preach to me about how woke you are by, uh, you know, having an all-female cast or whatever. It's just no interest. What what matters is a good movie. And, uh, you know, the, the, the actress is good. And, uh, you know, that's it. Well, Karen Gill. I mean, I, I personally, I'm a big fan of Karen Gill. Um, she, I thought she was yeah. superb as Amy Pond in Doctor Who, with movies like Oculus, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, and even Jumanji. You know, she's proven herself that she's a solid actress. She's very entertaining. She's a very physical actress, and she's absolutely beautiful. So she ticks a lot of boxes. You know, to make oh, yeah. the movie a success. Yeah. I just hope they don't pile this on her too soon. You know, I'm not sure she's ready to lead a franchise yet, but maybe she is. This, this could be the thing to really I mean, finally showcase her. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I can't really comment on that. What I can say is I do like her a lot as an actress. Um, mm-hmm. I, not so much for the Doctor Who stuff. I didn't really watch it. Uh, Oculus was where she first came to my attention because it was sort of low-budget horror. And uh, then Guardians of the Galaxy. Obviously, I liked her a lot as Nebula. So, I mean, she's a good actress. And uh, I think she's got the chops to be a really sort of spicy pirate uh, type character. Yeah. For mm-hmm. But, you know, uh, as for uh, Helm and a franchise, ah, I couldn't, couldn't talk to that, you know. Fair enough. This is a bit of news that really got me excited. Um, one of my all-time favourite movies, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you're with me on this, is the original Predator movie, uh, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course. Uh, now, news has come out uh, that the Predator Hunting Ground video game, I'll see coming out towards the end of the month, where you get to play as Schwarzenegger's character, Dutch and Arnie is coming back to do the voice. The character looks like him, sounds like him, and apparently Schwarzenegger himself has said that the dialogue they have recorded will explain where Dutch has been between or thirty three years between the video game and the original movie. I this oh my god this uh, for this alone I'm going to buy this game. Well, it's I was always going to buy the game. I was actually interested in it uh, whenever I saw the trailers a while back, and I wondered were they going to include. You know, um, it's like the Alien Isolation game had a uh, segment where you played as um, Alan Ripley in the original Alien game, as opposed to yeah. uh, Amanda, who you play in the uh, in the sequel. Um, I am very interested in this because I always wondered what happened to Dutch, and uh, I love Predator 1 and 2, definitely two of my favorite movies. Um, uh, I, I think, you know, uh, 2... Is one of the last great sci-fi action movies of the, the late 80s, early 90s, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but one, um, it's the, the bars, an awesome action movie. So the, the fact that Schwarzenegger's coming back, I, uh, I saw this on his Instagram this morning. So, uh, you know, I would, I, I would like to play the game anyway. I think it looks like a good game. But um, it just the whole... The lore of, of Predator and where he's been, etc. If that gets worked into it, that's even better. You know, really yeah, better. it sort of reminded me. Do you remember Arnie? Was there was the rumor that he was going to appear at the end of uh, what was it, the Predator, um, which yeah. is a movie yeah. I don't even want to talk about because it oh my god it derailed so much in the second act. Uh, but mm-hmm. you know, uh, to me, this franchise I love I love Danny Glover in the second movie. But to me, this is always oh, going yeah. to be a Schwarzenegger franchise, and just to have him back is a really enticing prospect. Um, absolutely, uh, big time, and yeah, I mean, I, I just want to put it out there that I really did love Danny Glover in Predator 2, I thought he was awesome, yeah. and that that film had a great cast, it had Bill Paxton, uh, yeah. I can't remember the name of the, the actress, uh, I think she might have been Vasquez, uh, well, was it? Uh, she played no, Vasquez no, it was a different and, uh, actress, different actress? Yeah, yeah, it was but, a different yeah, actress, but yeah, she I, was last... Loved it, loved the movie. Um, but you know, Predator, the original Predator, for me is one of the greatest action movies ever made. Um, it is. Uh, you know, it everything is. from the the, the cast uh, to the you know the story behind it. Um, John McTiernan, one of the greatest action directors of all time, amazing. Yeah. Alan Silvestri doing the soundtrack as well. Yeah. Winner, winner. Yeah. 
Uh, I can't wait for my two to get a wee bit older and sit down and watch Predator with them because, Mm. you know, unfortunately it is pretty scary and it's very graphic, uh, but it looks just as good. I watched it a few months ago and it looks just as good today as it did when it came out originally. Um, So, yeah. uh, uh, Just to divert slightly. No, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, I've been rereading some of the comic book material and I reread all three of the Batman versus Predator uh, graphic novels recently. Mm-hmm. And they really hold up. Uh, the first yep. one where Dave Gibbons and Adam, Adam Kubert is just amazing. The first so, one's fantastic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. And so a lot of that material, I read a lot of this stuff. And it was um, Mark Verhaden who did Battlestar Galactica, who wrote all that Predator alien stuff for Dark Horse. Right, okay. And it's just really, really good sci-fi writing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So anyone and the first story, you remember the first story with Dutch's, Dutch's brother, Shafe, as well? Yeah. The first Predator comic from yeah. Dark Horse. It was absolutely superb as well. Um, right, okay. Uh, this this one sort of uh, tickled me a little bit. Bob Gale, of course, one of the writers of Back to the Future, has addressed a major plot hole. Now, we talked yesterday on Self and Saxon about how um, the Back to the Future... Uh, Josh Gatt had done a new sort of podcast with all the Back to the Future cast, and they talked in it about how there's definitely not going to be a fourth Back to the Future. Thank you. Uh, but they also, yeah. now, this has popped up. This actually popped up a wee while ago, and I just never got a chance to, to talk about it. Bob Gale has cleared up a big plot hole in Back to the Future, which um, has always been, why did Marty's parents not recognize that Marty was Calvin Klein? So now to me it wasn't so much a plot hole because you would just be like right well he well, lived I mean, thirty years thirty years ago so it's not him, um, but it has been something the fans have got about. So this is what Gail had had to say about it. He said, "Bear in mind that George and Lorraine only knew Marty when they were seventeen. They didn't even see him every one of those eight days. So many years later they still might not remember that interesting kid who got them together on their first." date night but i would ask anyone to think back on their high school days ask themselves how well do they remember a kid who might have been a semester or someone you went out with just that one time if you had no photo or reference after 25 years you'd probably have just a hazy recollection so lorraine and george might think it is funny that they once actually met someone called calvin klein and even if they thought that they thought their son at 16 or 17 had a resemblance to him it wouldn't really be a big deal I bet most of us could look through our high school yearbook and find photos of teenage classmates and bear some resemblance to our children. I think that's fair enough. Well, I mean, first off, I appreciate the level of pedantry that someone has had to go to. to think Man, this I is a really big it. thing. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. I, you know, because honestly, I watched that movie and it didn't even occur to me. I would, Maybe, maybe just because, obviously, I haven't nitpicked it. But, um, yeah, it's one of the things I like about fandoms, actually, and that is that they are totally pedantic and the hold, uh, you know, lower and canon to an incredibly high standard. I'm all for that, actually. So, um, so to seem so blasé about this, uh, I guess, says more about me than uh, the fandom because I, I do love the Back to the Future movies, but that was just not a particular element that ever, I ever felt. They need to go. Oh well, actually, you know. <laughs> but I'm, um, you know, fair play to fair play to Bob Gale. He cleared it up. You know, uh, I hope that puts all those people who were like up at night going, "Hi, how, how didn't they recognize like Calvin Klein was their son?" Years later, I hope it puts 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 that uh, to bed for them, and they can just yeah. like chill out now. You know what I mean? Rest easy. Rest easy. Um, right, HBO Max uh, was supposed to be opening with a Friends reunion, uh, an unscripted. Now everybody got excited because they thought it was going to be like an actual Friends episode, but it was more of a let's all sit around the couch and talk about how awesome Friends was. Uh, and it was cancelled um, because of the virus that we're, we're all right. going through right now. But uh, it seems that they may actually be able to get it done sooner than they thought because with the whole thing going on, there was fear that it might not be able to get filmed until later. But now Warner Media Entertainment and Direct to Consumer Chairman Bob Greenblatt has said, at first we thought shows would be delayed for a month or two at the most, and now it seems like it's going to be far longer than that. But we're holding out hope being able to get this special done, hopefully by the end of the summer. If the stars align, and hopefully we can get back into production. He also said that, they don't want to just do kind of the whole like we're doing right now. He didn't want to do the whole Skype Zoom thing where they're all sitting around right, in their right. kitchens or their bathrooms or whatever and, and just talking into a random screen, uh, which I think is fair enough. So, <laughs> you know, but it's it's really don't hopeful. Devalue it. that we're sh- don't devalue it. <laughs> no, I'm not devaluing it at all, but I think when it comes to the Friends cast, you want to see them all together and you want to see them interact and, yeah, yeah. you know, where they all are now. Well, what um, is, so is it, is it going to be like a TV show or what? 
Yeah, it's like I think they're doing like an hour special where they basically all sit around and reminisce about how awesome a show they created. Uh, you know, Friends, Friends was is, is very iconic. It's a moment right, okay. in time, uh, and I think it needs to be have a big deal. But what I find in it, you know, that they're now talking like we might get this film sooner than we hoped. Uh, you know, which is good because it, it gives people a little bit of optimism that this whole kind of crazy scenario we're going through right now isn't going to last forever um and we know it's not but it's nice to see a little even if it's just something like friends it's kind of what we got back to in the, to the first episode where it's the little things it's the unimportant things that are important yeah, and yeah, things yeah. like that no, I agree. it's just a ray of sunshine you know uh right and this is a big story and it just seems like all we're doing over the last couple of days is talking about the mandalorian with that uh, and everything else this story broke last night uh, Battlestar Galactica star Katie Sackhoff has joined the Mandalorian season two as Bo Katan. Um, now, Bo Katan was a lieutenant in the Death Watch on Mandalore, answering only to Pre Vizsla, the owner of the Dark Saber. Once Darth Maul took over Death Watch and took the Dark Saber for himself, the Bo Katan left Death Watch and recruited the Jedi and Ahsoka Tano had to come back to Mandalore to take it back from Maul, which is what we saw in the season finale uh, or the, the series finale of Clone Wars just a couple weeks ago. Uh, it also is very important because the Dark Saber pops up at the end of season one of The Mandalorian. So I think it's it's quite obvious why we're going to bring all these back. It also ties into Sabine Wren, uh, you know, and sort of all these other rumors that we're hearing. But this is this is a this is a cracking bit of casting. Well, you know, straight up, uh, I am happy about this on so many different levels. One, because I really like Bo Katan. Uh, two, because uh, I love Katie Sackhoff, and I don't think she's had really any any roles in recent years that have been standout, not since Starbuck and Battlestar. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, her as bo is a great piece of casting. She really fits the character. But also, um, they're really uh, melding the ending of uh, the club into the Mandalorian quite well, uh, in that, you know, they're taking all those uh, elements uh, that, you know, at the end of the Clone Wars isn't, uh, you know, it, it, it isn't so... Uh, separate from what's happening in the mandalorian it's almost like a, an indirect continuation of yeah. uh because you saw the uh the you know the taking of mandalore and then uh the, the empire obviously took it back uh during uh the period between a new hope and uh return of the jedi uh or sorry during sorry uh during the period between revenge of the sith and a new hope they took yeah. it back so um uh, the mandalorians have been you know exiled they're living as little sort of uh clans and the idea that bo is going to show up now, and uh, this is going to be a uh, a continuation uh, of that story. I'm, I mean, I'm I'm delighted, and I love Katie Sackhoff. So, when when yes, when? Well, the way I th- what I'm starting to see here is that this Rebels, Clone Wars, The Mandalorian. This seems to me to be the story that Dave Filoni wanted to tell, and he's bringing he's waving it into all three series, which I think is absolutely yeah. superb. Um, and I did a wee bit of reading around in this. Yeah, I did a bit of reading around in this last night. I was reading a lot of reports, basically saying that while John Favreau is the showrunner on The Mandalorian, Dave Filoni is on set yeah. every day, and he is kind of he's the he's basically the new George Lucas, where Favreau is constantly uh-huh. going to him and saying, "Does this work? What way do you think this should fit into the mythology and everything else?" Favreau and 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 Filoni, I think they're merging together. Is I think it's absolutely inspired. And again, I know there's this worry that people. People are like, oh, it's just making yeah. the universe feel very small. This story, this show is set on Mandalore, um, or around the Mandalorian, rather. So the idea that Boba Fett's coming into it, that Bo-Katan's coming back into it, that Sabine Wren's coming back, they're all Mandalorians. They're all part of that story. Um, so yeah. I personally, I think yeah. this is absolutely brilliant. And I'm oh, really, really yeah, excited. Listen, and I, I've, I can't heap enough praise on that creative thing. I mean, Dave Filoni is the son George Lucas never had. Do you know what I mean? Uh, the guy really yeah. understands... Uh, the legacy, and uh, I think he's undone a lot of the bad will uh, engendered in the fan base uh, with the uh, the recent trilogy, or at least the side of the fan base that hated it. Because um, you know, The Mandalorian is, is carrying Star Wars on its back right now. Uh, that and the, the the final season of the Clone Wars, and it's entirely down to I think Dave Filoni being very very reverential, uh, a great storyteller, a great producer. Uh, so you know, I don't, I, I don't normally blow this much smoke up anybody's ass, but I really do think you guys, he, he's, he's the wizard tits, like you know. So <laughs> yeah, and on top of that, he's a really nice guy. I met him at celebration a couple of years yeah. ago. I talked to him. He's, he's a lovely, lovely nice guy. Um, Not always, but extra. 
Yeah, it absolutely does. And, uh, you know, to me, I, I could be wrong here, right? But I, I'm reading a lot and I'm seeing a lot of videos being made that there's sort of an internal struggle going on right now at Disney Lucasfilm um, between Kathleen Kennedy uh, and the sort of the... I don't want to get into all this, but kind of the agenda that she's trying to push yeah, with Star Wars yeah, and yeah, everything else. No. And on the other side, there's John Favreau and there's 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 Dave Filoni. And to me, right, what I see is I think a lot of the damage that was done in the last few years with Star Wars in the fandom was the dislike of Ray. Okay, um, myself and Saxon talked about this a wee bit yesterday as well. Where we didn't like Ray, we didn't dislike Ray because she was a woman. We disliked her because her character wasn't well developed. And to be honest with you, she was a bit. Bit vanilla. She was a bit bland. Now we all liked her in the Force Awakens. Well, we thought, over, right? There's a, she was over. Uh, was just, go ahead. She was overpowered as well. Yeah. So and that all that was why we didn't like the character. But it almost seems to me like maybe there's a deliberate move here to pull back Ahsoka Tano, Sabine Wren, Bo Katan, who are all female characters, and the fans are bouncing because they cannot wait to see these characters come back. Which to me dispels this whole idea that we're a this bunch of knuckle dragon sexists. This is the, one of the biggest fallacies that was ever perpetrated by the mainstream news media. Uh, War Wars fans are somehow sexist because Star Wars fans, indeed sci fi fans, are some of the most inclusive people I've ever met in my life. Star yep. Wars had Princess Leia as a uh, you know, role model like to get. Uh, you know, she, she was. Uh, even with the guys, you know, sometimes like we bring up a prison break where she essentially takes the lead in the death for a prison break. Leia is is a massively stood she's butch. Ooh, I'm sick. It's because she's well written, well developed. Uh, she's you know she ticks all the boxes. So this whole thing where uh, you know Star Wars fans or Star Trek fans have say a lot of this now too. Uh, elements of fandoms are sexist because they don't lead to fail. Uh, uh, characters that are being force fed to you and if you don't agree with uh, or like the characters or you know if you've got any sort of issue with them then you're automatically smeared and I, I think it's one of the most divisive pieces of marketing I've ever seen and the mainstream media are disgustingly guilty of it so yeah no I totally agree but hopefully this will change things around and we know that the, the, the situation the world's in at the minute is is kind of pushing all that to the background and I think when it all comes out of it we'll all be a wee bit more level-headed uh, about everything, I hopefully. Listen, listen, I, I can't wait for more, uh, you know, I, I, I can't wait for Ahsoka Tano, I can't wait for Bo-Katan. Uh, I loved Gina Carano uh, in uh, season one of The Mandalorian. This fallacy that, that fans yeah. are somehow sexist, it just... Of, of course, there's a fringe of every uh, category or every group of people that are, uh, you know, that, that that may lean that way. But it's a fringe element. But the majority of, of fans uh, are inclusive people. They want you to come in and enjoy their hobby. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. Well, I mean, we we've been to conventions. I've been to celebration. Saxon's been to celebration. Yeah. And man, it's just. You know, every every gender, every sex, every race, every creed, every color. Nobody yeah. cares. We're all just there yeah. for the love of the game, yeah. and and that's what it's all about. And I, I, I'm long may that last. Uh, right, listen, that's that's all the big news for the day, Mark. Thank you very much for tuning yeah. in. Um, I, I'll have Pleasure you back. You'll be back with me. We'll be back again on Friday. Friday, Friday. Yeah. I'll yeah. Be here. I look forward to it. Uh, and for everybody out there listening to the show, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for getting involved. Keep up and let us know what you think of the show. Uh, what you don't, what you, if you like it, if you don't like it, let us know why. Uh, let, are we right? Are we wrong? Should we be reporting on anything else? We want to hear it all. If you want to get us on the social media, get us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash following the nerd. Get us on Twitter at nerd following. And if you just Google following the nerd, you'll find all our wonderful uh, social media stuff out there as well. Uh, the main website is following the nerd.com where all these stories and many, many more will be popped popping up all the time and of course just make sure clicking them down below make sure you're subscribed and click the little bell for your notifications as always mark thank you very much pleasure as always mark you have a good one you too sir uh, to saxon who was working in the background uh, he will be back on the show tomorrow and we will be getting into all the all more news but all the the nerdy news of the day if i can remember how to talk in the meantime i've been mark it's been an absolute pleasure guys stay nerdy and we'll talk to you tomorrow